Falcon fans, it's your boy Rakundo coming back at you with another video. So, this is mock draft number two for me. And I went heavily defense in this draft. Um, I think that's what we need to make our balls for in this offseason. So, I went defense a lot in this draft. The first four picks were defense. So, guys, if you had out not already, go ahead and please subscribe to the channel. Please hit that notification bell so you know when I drop another video. Please hit the like button so I know you guys like to hear what I talk about. Then please share my video throughout the YouTube universe so more people can come in and hear me talk about these Atlanta Falcons. So before we get into the draft, mock draft real quick, we're going to talk about Liam McCullough. Um, the Atlanta Falcons have re-signed the long snapper back to the team. So we have our long snapper, somebody who's familiar with the system coming back. Liam McCullough signed back with the Atlanta Falcons still haven't heard anything on any other franchise tags from or even players from any team so far. Of course, you know, these guys got to March 7 to come up with that, that um tag or they can actually sign these guys back to extension. So definitely going to be on the lookout for a couple of key free agents, you know, on the free agent market. Guys like the run pains. I like Bates. Of course, so things like that, we're definitely going to see how these guys actually, um, what, they, what the team decide to do with these guys. So just be on the lookout for those guys. All right, next thing, um, we're going to go ahead into this mock draft. Like I said, this is my second mock draft of the year. And this is basically um, defenses. I, I want to really focus on defense this time a lot. Make sure that we fix on some of our depth that we had on the defense side of the ball. Once again, remember, this is not knowing what the Atlanta Falcons are going to do in the free agency market. It's just going out based what we have now and the needs that we have. So I think it's a pretty good draft. Some solid guys out here that definitely can help this team moving forward. All right, we'll go ahead until the number eight overall pick. Ryan Breesy, I know you guys know who this is. Out of Clemson. Of course, he actually got injured ACL back in September so he only played four games this past season but for all intents and purposes the word is out that he's good um, he should be back up to health usually ACLs take by the year so you know that'll put him back around you know the start of the season this upcoming season but you know a lot of guys he'll heal faster than that um, I could definitely see him probably starting up on a training camp if you know we were to take a guy like Brian Breesey. Um, the things I like about him, he's 6'5", 305 pounds, um, has the power and he has the agility. Um, he holds up well against double teams. And be honest with you, he kind of reminds me of a guy like Grady Jarrett, just a bigger guy. Because like I said, he's 6'5", 305. But his, his ability to be crafty, be able to get off block, his quickness in the inside, um, has the pass rush ability and the power to go along with that. If you go look at some of his weightlifting, really, really strong player. Um, like I said, able to withstand double teams and things like that. So Ron Breesy, but what I like about it, like I said, it's quickness, being able to, you know, man manipulate blocks and get up field. Kind of remind me of a guy like Gr Grady Jarrett, which is interesting because he comes from the same school. And what are, they, what are they teaching those guys up at Clemson to be able to dominate on that defensive line? So a guy like Brian Breesey, this definitely would be somebody that the Atlanta Falcons could consider. A little bit you know, lower on the draft board because of the injury. I think if he didn't have the ACL injury, he would be talked about up there with a guy like Jalen Carter. So good pick for the Atlanta Falcons if they were to go this route. Definitely need somebody else on that defensive line. And Brian Breesey would definitely be somebody that could help with that. At the number 44 overall pick in the second round, we take a, a D Tomo. <laughs> I can't pronounce his name. Don't want to mess it up. But a Baltimore from Northwestern edge rusher. This guy is 6'2", 284 pounds, run about a 4'5". In the 40, um, powerful pass rusher himself. Um, his strength right now is more of the bull rush. He's 
going to have to develop some pass rush skills, you know, raw talent. Somebody you definitely um, can see in the same realm with a guy like Armour Evie Katie. Like I said, the more pass rushers, the better. So bringing a guy like this up, I wanted to stick to it. This one of the best players available that was on the board at this position. So this is um, a guy that's probably not getting a lot of traction, but I think once we get to the, um, you know, the, the combine and things like that, we might see his name more and more. Remember, this is a guy from the Senior Bowl, and we know Atlanta Falcons track record. We're looking at guy from the, to the Senior Bowl. We have drafted a couple of guys um, in this last draft, to say the least, from the um, Senior Bowl. D'Angelo Malone was a guy. Um, Richard Grant was a guy. So um, our quarterback now, um, Desmond Ritter, was at the Senior Bowl. So the Atlanta Falcons have a lot, you know, of – of guys that they like to drop senior bowl, somebody who's been in college for four years coming in. Um, definitely you could think about a guy like like I dub or more um that they really could consider. So that's why I picked him. Like I said, bull rush, a lot of power. Go and look at his um his reps. I think he did 30 reps at the at the um senior bowl at the two and twenty five. 225 max was like 405, so it's really powerful pass rusher that the Nine of Facts have come in and try to develop him to help this team out. Next guy, I know you guys, most of you guys are familiar with Keely Ringo out of Georgia. Of course, of course, I'm I'm a little biased on this because he's a Georgia Bulldog. 6'2, 210 pounds, ran a 435 in the 40. Um his one of his strengths is actually man coverage, which I think with Ron Nielsen coming in, it's going to be a lot more what the Falcon does. Go back to a lot of uh, Georgia Bulldogs games. Keely Ringo played a lot of man coverage. Does have the ability to play in zone as well. If you're going to go back and look at that game against Ohio State, um, I think Robinson Harris Jr. kind of exposed him a little bit, but we could say the same thing about AJ Terrell, his last game in college, where he got exposed by Chase. So um, it's going to happen if you're a cornerback, you're going to be on the island. But for the most part, Keely Ringo um, has the potential to actually be a really good um, cornerback in this league. Actually, I did not realize he was that fast, um, but kind of probably got to stop relying on his athletic ability and start working more on his technique. But once you get into an NFL locker room, I think that's going to be – you can be able to, you know, to to harness those skills and make him better. Getting getting around a guy like A.J. Terrell, that's going to push him to be the best he could be. Um, going up against our our um, pass – defensive pass game coordinator as well, um, Jerry Gray. I think he can get Keely Ringo to where he want going to really be a good player. But his athletic ability is already there. The skill set is already there. Been in a, in a um, pro-style defense um, since he's been at Georgia. And I think this definitely can translate into the NFL. So this is why I picked Keely Ringo at number 75. At 110, round four, Ronnie Hickman. I think I had Ronnie Hickman on the last um, draft that I did. But once again, Stand on the defensive side of the ball. Safety, um, running Hickman, 6'1", 209 pounds, runner 4'4", 4, 4, actually able to run with tight ends and some some bigger slots on receivers. Has the ability to, to blitz as well and has great ball skills. Um, big safety that we can have if the Atlanta Falcons is not able to, you know, to actually go out in your free agency and, and, you know, upgrade that position. They could bring in a guy like Ronnie Hickman to help be alongside uh, Richard Grant. And like always, I never want to forget Jalen Hawkins. But um, like I said, we need playmakers on our defensive side of the ball. And if a guy like Ronnie Hickman could come in and start making plays, that would be awesome. At one thirteen, round four, this when I first went offense on the side. We definitely got to go out and get – a receiver and 
Trey Palmer um, is where I, I landed at 113. Actually, 438 in speed can take the top off. Um, this is why I picked this 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 young man coming out of Nebraska, Trey Palmer, because he's so fast, has the ability to stretch the field. That's what definitely what the Atlanta Falcons should be looking for, what they need to bring somebody in like Trey Palmer who has the ability to actually stretch the field. That 4-3-8 speed is definitely something that um, the Atlanta Falcons would be would love to have on this team, somebody that can draw the attention and take that middle, open up that middle for guys like Drake London and Kyle Pitts. So Trey Palmer is definitely one of the guys that we definitely could consider at 113. All right, 161 round five, Kenny McIntosh. Once again, another guy from Georgia. Um, being biased, but I, I love the way um, the potentially Kenny McIntosh can fit in this offense. Somebody who can catch the ball out the backfield is a great receiver out the backfield. Does have the ability to pass protect as well. Love the way he set up his, sets his blocks up and able to get down the field. Go back and watch some of the things Kenny McIntosh would do. Um, his, his years at Georgia, very productive back. And I think this past year was one of his breakout years for the Georgia Bulldogs. Run about a 4-5. Hopefully he run a little bit you know, faster than that when he goes to the combine. But um, we know that he has the ability to, like I said, be part of the passing game for pass protection and coming out the backfield. Definitely a different Blend from what we got with Tyler Algier and um, Cordell Patterson. Not saying they can't catch out, but they're bigger backs, bigger bruiser backs. Kenny McIntosh sitting at 6'1", 210 pounds. So he's not a little guy, but at the same time, um, a little smaller than our other two backs that we have on the team. And then our last two guys, um, last two picks got at 226 and 247. Both of these guys were best player available at the time. I'm going out to get a linebacker and Sir Bakke Dennis want to just bring in another linebacker to add to that depth room. And at tackle, John OG Koo um, from Boise State at 247. Want to make sure that we always thinking about the offensive line as well, um, bringing more depth at that position. Because we still don't know what we're going to get out of um, with Caleb McGarry, looks like the Falcons might not even franchise tag him. They're going to let him test the market. And if that's the case, we might actually lose Caleb McGarry. Hopefully, um, as we speak, they're working on a you know uh, extension for Caleb McGarry, and we don't have to utilize that franchise tag on him anyway. So, guys, let me know what you think about this mostly defensive um, smart draft that I have. Here, number two. Like I said, all these drafts are definitely going to change once we figure out what the Atlanta Falcons do in free agency. And some of the needs that they had, one of the needs that um, when you look at this board, they said they need a quarterback. Of course, you know, I did not pick a quarterback here because I'm expecting the Atlanta Falcons to go out and bring a veteran quarterback in to pair with Desmond Ritter. So, um, but this this draft was definitely focused on defense. I started to go defense all picks. Um, that would have been interesting because I don't know if a team ever went defense for every pick in their draft or offense in every pick in the draft. That would be a good quick one of those um, trivial questions to ask which team has went all on one side of the ball in the draft. Pretty sure it has happened, but it's really rare for a team to go all offense, all defense in the draft. So, so anyway, guys, let me know what you think about my second mock draft. Went defense. Some of the other guys on the defensive side um, had already left at number eight. So, I was stuck with Brian Breesey. Might have went cornerback. Um, might would have went edge rush as well. But this particular draft, Brian Breesey was the best pick that I felt really thought that could really help this team. So let me hear your thoughts. And I'm out of here. This is your boy Ricundo coming back at you with another video.
Peace.